Hey, I'm Randy, and you're watching The Cheap Audio Man. Here at The Cheap Audio Man, we help everyone find high-value hi-fi, home theater, and headphone equipment. And today, we're talking about the ELAC BS-41. A little bit of a mystery here. This sometimes goes down to $68. Is it any good? I don't know. Grab a cup of coffee. Sit down. Let's talk about the ELAC BS-41. Let's face it, you're probably getting a divorce if you haven't gotten one already. That's why today's sponsor is very important if you don't want to die alone. Who is it? It's Keeps. That's right, Keeps. It's personalized treatment for male pattern baldness from a real doctor. Not one that operates out of a strip mall next to a subway. A real physician that went to doctor school. Two out of three men experience some type of hair loss by the time they're 35. If you've been on any of my patron Zooms on Sunday night, you'd know that because it looks like a Telly Savalas lookalike contest, because people are bald. Even myself, Mother Nature, has thinned me out a bit. This is what I used to look like. Yeah, look at that hair. Look at the denim. Yeah, my mom dropped this off to me when they moved. She didn't want it anymore, so she just gave it to me. Now I hang it in the kids' rooms until they see it and freak out. Point being, if I look like that, I'd be having a, a nice seafood dinner at Red Lobster with some cheddar biscuits with a, a potential new mate. Not anymore, be at Arby's. That's right, keeps. A physician will tailor a treatment program to you and then they send it to you. And then you can enjoy uh, some nice sweet music on your affordable hi-fi system while treating your thinning hair. That's right. It's affordable because it's generic. That's right, generic hair treatment medicine from a licensed physician tailored to you so don't lose any more hair get some keeps maybe grow back some get an eye patch you can go cosplay as snake plissken and he won't die alone you can you can heal yourself from the outside inside you still may be an empty emotional shell but that's okay you're gonna look real good keeps keeps.com slash cheap audio man for 50 percent off your first order so a bit of a mystery surrounding this speaker it is only available, as far as I can tell, on Amazon. It's shipped and sold by Amazon, but it doesn't show up on Elac's website. So I don't really know what to think of this speaker because I couldn't find it anywhere. The speaker was not designed by Andrew Jones, to my knowledge, although it looks like it was designed by Andrew Jones. This looks very similar to the original B series. So the B6, the B5, the B4. That's right, there is actually a model in the first line of debut speakers designed by Andrew Jones that looked exactly like this, or at least fairly similar, and it was called the B4. This one is called the BS41. And actually, I'm kind of excited because if there's a BS41, I hope there's a BS51 and a BS61 because I actually like the original debut series better than the second gen. So the B 5.2, B 6.2. And I talked to, well, I didn't talk to, I was texting Andrew Jones back and forth when he used to work at ELAC. And I said, listen, you should just revamp the original series. And he said, well, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. I'm not saying that Andrew Jones had anything to do with this, but what I'm saying is this is awful similar to the original ELAC debut line. Now, they're not the same though. I think these are a little bit more affordable. Speaking about being affordable, I actually bought these at $68. Wah, wah. It's $150 right now. But what I am hoping is that this is going to track with Sony SSCS5, which has three prices, $180, $150, and it goes all the way down to $80. I am hoping they are going to play the same pricing game with the ELAC BS41 and that it will go back down to $68. Because even at $150, this is a pretty compelling speaker. Let's talk about specifications. So this is a four inch, what is it, polypropylene base driver. The original debut series did have a woven fiber woofer as well as the B4. This may be an area where they are trying to save some money and bring a very good sounding speaker to market at a very low price to market. That sounds so obnoxious, bringing this to market. 
one inch soft dome tweeter. The rated specifications on this is a generous, well, not generous, a low, an impressive, there we go, an impressive base roll off of 48 hertz out of a very small speaker with a four inch driver. And guess what? I don't think they're lying. And then it says it's rated up to 35,000 hertz. If you look at the tweeter grill here, reminiscent of some of the Andrew Jones speakers. This whole thing looks like a combination between the original debut series, B5, B4, B6, and the B 5.2, 6.2. I don't think they had a 4.2, but this surround, this stuff, it all looks similar. It has a very similar enclosure covering, whatever you want to call it, vinyl wrap, that looks like the B5.2, B6.2, and it is very good looking. It is a wood grain or fake wood, but it has texture, and frankly, it's one of the better looking speakers, even under $200. This comes with a grill that press fits by posts into the enclosure and I definitely don't have a problem with that considering this thing is 150 retail and goes all the way down to $68 on the back there is a rear port and five-way binding posts on the bottom and these binding posts are better than the ones that were on the $600 PSB imagine XB and then on the bottom there are some foam rubber not foam, rubber bumpers. I don't know, they could be foam. Is foam and rubber the same thing? Drop it in the comments. They have the specs down here on a little sticker on the bottom. Six ohm nominal impedance. It says max power input, 80 watts. I did look up the sensitivity. It is 84.5. So this is not an easy speaker to drive. However, I didn't have a problem driving it with any of the amplifiers I put on it. And I put on... Let's see, the IEMA A300, the IEMA A07, the Lox G uh, A30, and then I put it on the Pioneer VSX LX305. So a combination of Class D uh, and then a receiver, regular receiver. I imagine these are gonna be in a desktop situation, maybe uh, as fronts in a small home theater or sound bar <coughs> replacement, something like that. They're small speaker though, but they don't play small. I'm just gonna hold it like this. I was trying to bring it over, but then it didn't work out with the framing of the fancy camera. Anyway, BS41. So sound wise, this sounds very similar to the original Pioneer e uh, Elac Jones, Andrew Jones. This sounds very similar or reminiscent to the first Pioneer, which was LR22-22 LR, something like that. It was a ridiculous, ridiculous model number. Yeah, okay, he's in frame. All right, so these sound warmer, much warmer, but they also pack a huge punch that one would not expect out of a speaker with a four inch driver. That is the reason why the sensitivity is so low. So what they did is they crushed down the sensitivity of the tweeter with a crossover, usually a I don't know, resistor in line or in front of or right after the second order high pass filter. I don't know what kind of crossover is in here. I didn't pull it apart, but please feel free if you buy them, rip the speaker apart, check out the crossover and update it as you see fit. Generally, when I see a lower sensitivity on a small bookshelf speaker like this, it's a good thing because what they're doing is they're bringing down the tweeter level to be in line with the base level, or sometimes in this case, I think they're pushing it down a little bit more. So the overall sound signature is a little bit warmer and the bass is a little bit more on display compared to a lot of the other speakers in this price category. This is a welcome departure from the sound signature that is pretty common in the sub $200 speaker category and that is either a U-shaped or a little bit emphasized on the treble. It's a warmer speaker, emphasized on the bass, and I could not believe how hard this thing punched. Intergalactic by the Beastie Boys. While it did not extend super low, it did extend lower than much costlier speakers with much bigger drivers. I was surprised. 
Killing Strangers was very punchy. Highway to Hell also a little bit mm, more punch. So that bass on Highway to Hell is pretty tight. And this was pretty punchy. So that tells me there's an emphasis on the bass here. So this is not going to be a flatline neutral speaker. I think this is neutral-ish. And when you bring up the volume a bit, it brings the treble back in the line. Very similar to the PSB Imagine XB, the speaker review I just did. Bass tonally is pretty good. However, overall the bass on here can get a little bit sloppy. And we need to have reasonable expectations on a $150 retail and a $68 on sale speaker. The bass is not gonna be super tight. At times, it does cover up the mids at louder volumes. If anything, a little bit of tone controls on this is actually going to clean the bass up a little bit more. And I'm talking about backing the bass down. And usually it's the exact opposite on speakers in this price category. Usually I'm cranking the bass up. Overall, the bass tone is pretty good. Bass amount is exceptional. A mm, little bit sloppy at times, but that's just fine. I will take that slop over not having any bass any day of the week, twice on Sunday. Let's talk about mid-range. Mid-range on this speaker is very similar. Actually, this entire review is going to be very similar to the Imagine XB by PSB review, except this one costs retail a quarter of that speaker. I'm not saying this is better than the Imagine XBs by PSB. I'm just saying overall the sound signature is similar. Overall, the impression I got from these speakers is similar. Mid-range on this speaker leans a little bit warm and lacks a little bit of the finite detail you'll find on a speaker that has a different sound signature. For example, the Sony SSCS5. Mids are still very enjoyable. Female vocals have a warmer lean. So Adele, Hello by Adele. is That song was a little bit more caramelly. Okay, Male vocals, pretty awesome. There will be time by Mumford & Sons. Both the Mumford & Sons guy that looks like he he's a snappy dresser with his tweed jackets. Both he and Baba Mall had a very sit back, get a cup of tea, cup of coffee. This is not a mm, forward speaker at all. Although I do think that vocals were still in line. Soundstage and imaging is just fine. Small speaker, you can get up into it. These do throw a larger than average soundstage laterally than most speakers in the price range. And that was one thing about the original debut speakers. They soundstaged like crazy. So the off-axis performance was really, really, really good, which means they have a sweet, uh, which means they have a larger sweet spot. So you don't have to be like right in the middle to still get a center image. Conversely, you're going to sacrifice some of the finite defense definitive center imaging that some speakers have that don't have as good of off-axis performance. Bottom line, soundstage and imaging is good. Center imaging, not as good as lateral imaging, but again, we are splitting hairs for a $150 retail speaker. Acoustic guitars are not going to be quite as detailed as on something like the Sony SSCS5 or even the Mica RB42, but they're still very enjoyable. And overall, I think the mids fit in with the vibe of the speaker. Let's talk about treble. Treble is detailed yet stepped back and not on display, just like the PSB Imagine XB review. It's there, it's clear for the most part. It's just a little bit down, a little bit further back in the mix. Tonally, though, and or, the organic sound, cymbals sound like cymbals. They're not brief at all. They're just not as apparent as on other speakers like the Sony SSCS5. The problem with some of those speakers that do have an emphasis on the treble, sometimes that treble is not very good. It can be brief. Maybe the decay doesn't hang out as long. The decay on these speakers does hang out. A long time because I think it's actually a very good driver for the price. I'm not saying this rivals thousand dollar speakers, but for the price, treble on this is very good. And the good thing about not having enough treble is when you turn up the volume, usually the treble comes back in line. 
And if you use tone controls, you can bring that treble up to a level that you want, even at lower volumes. So the good thing about a speaker that's emphasized in the bass, not as much in the treble at this price point, is usually the electronics that one is getting at this price point are the opposite. So this fits really well with stuff like the LoxG A30, which is a little bit more analytical. So you may not have to do any tone controls with the LoxG A30. With the IEMA stuff, that is a bit more neutral amplifier. So you may have to play around with tone controls a little bit more on the IEMA if you don't like this overall sound signature or don't prefer it. I think this is a great sound signature. Personally, I like it. But I was tweaking the tone controls a little bit on my IEMA A300 to get this right where I liked it. And I got it right where I liked it very easily with minimal adjustment. I think treble's good. I just don't think it's the star of the show or at least it's not a featured player as is the bass in the mid-range. What are my final thoughts? Final thoughts on the ELAC BS41 is I am thrilled that this speaker exists. I'm still a little bit confused as to why it exists. I think it does to compete with the Sony SSCS5. A little confused about the sales channel too. If this is sold outside of Amazon and you've seen it, why don't you drop it in the comments? I did see something on Slick Deals, but what it really did is redirect back to Amazon. So I really don't know how this fits in with ELAC because it's not on their website, but I don't care. It's available and it sounds awesome. This represents kind of the opposite end of the pendulum swing from the Sony SSCS5. Sony SSCS5 is very clean. A little bit cooler mids and then obviously the top end is pretty emphasized on the Sony. This is, well, the opposite of that. It's still great. Both those speakers are great. And if they both go on sale for $68 and $78 respectively, for $160, one could get two very good speakers and be able to enjoy two very different sound signatures or figure out, hey, do I prefer the warmer ELAC speaker or do I prefer the more analytical Sony speaker? Personally, I just get both of them. This speaker though plays pretty loud and in small to even medium rooms, I think you could get away with using these as a dedicated two channel system or as front speakers for a home theater slash TV setup. There is a matching center speaker that comes in this line. So obviously these are meant to be front channels unless, unless, unless there's a BS 51 coming out or BS 61 coming out then these could be relegated to surround speakers. However, with the rear port, with a little bit of the boomy bass at higher levels, if you're going to be using these as surround speakers and they are close to a wall at all, you may want to consider plugging the port. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. Some socks, roll up some socks, stick them in there, preferably clean ones. Or it doesn't matter. You can use dirty socks if you'd like. I've used diapers before, not used diapers, but clean diapers. Just roll it up, stick it right in there. You gotta work with what you have, is what I'm saying. Overall, I think these are a fantastic speaker and mind blowing really at their price. They're not perfect. They have a bit of sloppy bass at times, but you can turn that down with a little bit of tone controls. I think it's a great speaker and I hope that they come out with a five inch and a six inch version because then we're hearkening back to the original debut series, which I think were a much better speaker than what's available now. The, what's available now with the 5.2 and the 6.2 are great. It's not my personal cup of tea though. These, mm, much better. Highly recommended, even at $150. So, how do these stack up against the Sony SSCS5, the Mica RB42s, the Yamo S803, all of these speakers that are in the sub $200 category? Because now we have a new player in that category. It's not just the Sony's anymore, not just Mica RB42 anymore, not just Yamo S803 anymore. We've got a fourth contender. 
So that comparison is going to be coming up later. And when I get to that video, I will post a link here so that you can go jump to that video. Doesn't exist yet, but maybe sometime after I do it, I'll put it back in here. So if you want to support the channel, you can sign up for Patreon, patreon.com slash cheap man. Every Sunday night, we have Patreon only Zooms. We also have a Patreon only Facebook group. You can also sign up for Amazon Music or Tidal. Click on the links in the description. Even if you sign up for a trial, I'll get a couple of dollars. You can also use my links to buy the ELAC BS41. Those are affiliate links, which means if you click and buy, I will get a commission, but it doesn't cost you any more. So it's a great way to support the channel. So don't binge watch anything on Netflix or Hulu unless you're pumping it through the ELAC BS41s. Get the ELAC BS41s, listen to some music, and fill your soul with happiness. And with that, I'm Randy. I'm the Cheap Audio Man.